This episode covers Town of Salem 2 Classic Mode. We'll be putting our deduction skills to the test and separating truth from deception to ensure the safety or destruction of the town, depending on our randomly assigned role. The chat from other players and some elements of this game may not be suitable for everyone, so viewer discretion is advised. Alright, here we are. Let's go ahead and get this started. Looks like the game's about to begin. So this is where we're going to type in the name we want to play as. I usually just pick Jara. So what's going to happen is we're going to go behind this curtain. We're going to be randomly assigned a role. And then we've got some townspeople. We've got coven people. Uh, we've also got a serial killer we have to try and root out. And we got to find out who's who. So my role is going to be Tavern Keeper. I've had this role quite a bit. Uh, once per night, I'll get the option to block someone else's role. So, like, if there is a serial killer, I could choose to, you know, have them not perform their action. And because of that, the rest of the group can deduce as to who, you know, everyone is. Looks like we're just saying good morning. I'll go ahead and stay quiet for now. I've also found that if you talk too soon, you could get targeted by everyone else. All right, so for night one, I'm going to go ahead and have a drink with player number 12. This is going to roll block them. I'm also going to open up the last will and make a note uh, that I went ahead and did that. I'm also going to add in that I am the tavern keeper. Typically, if you're taken out, your last will is shown to everyone. There are some rules that can enchant your will so that it changes or, you know, can't be found or something to that effect, so... Uh, but if at all possible, you should always leave notes, if you're part of the town, that is. Player 5 was taken out in the middle of the night. They were killed by the coven. Uh, there's their last will. Then we now know that they were the investigator, so they're part of the town. Looks like player 7 was also taken out. They were shot by another town's player, uh, the veteran. Ooh, and they were the executioner. So that was a, a good shot. So right out the gate, we have player number three who's saying uh, they're a sheriff and they're calling out player number six. Player 12 says they're the seer and they've reported that they're what they're finding overnight when they use their ability. Now's about the time that the town starts demanding everyone declare their roles. The problem with declaring your role is, is that you're then an easy target for the coven or the serial killer that's still in play. The executioner is dead. Looks like everyone's voting against number six. All right, so player six is now going to state their case. Uh, of course, they don't want to be ejected from the game. And now the rest of the townspeople have to vote either guilty or innocent. Six says that they are the tracker. Okay, so we pardon this person on a vote of four to zero. Abstain basically means people didn't vote in time. Alright, it's too late to continue voting, so we're going to go back into our house. Uh, the coven is going to get another chance to take more people out, so is the serial killer. So right now, I have the choice if I want to roll block anyone. It can't be player 12. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and roll block number 6. I'm going to go ahead and add into my last will that I did roll block that person. And now we're back after night three. We're going to find out what happened. Looks like no one died. And I did block number six, so... So 15 is the veteran. Number one is now 
not telling the truth because I'm the tavern keeper. I mean, I guess it's possible you could have a second uh, tavern keeper, but not usually. All right, so we're going to take a vote on six. All right, so we're starting to form a consensus. Ooh, looks like number six was the tracker, so we were wrong. I'm the obvious target at this point, so I'm taken out in the next night. Of course, I was taken out by the coven, and as my will shows who I blocked, that way everyone left on the town side knows what I did, and hopefully uh, they can solve the mystery. Now, it's a good idea, even though you're dead, to stick around, because if your faction happens to win, uh, you win, even if you're dead. Now, the dead characters are still going to be able to talk to each other. Uh, that's why they show up in gray in the chat. Uh, their messages, of course, won't be seen by the people that are still playing. There are certain roles that can talk to someone that has died. I think Seer uh, is one of them. So, The town is split on voting out player 15 or 1, but before the vote can take place... The deputy uses their ability to take out player one, who turns out to be the poisoner from the coven side. Night falls before the next vote, with nine players remaining. Player one comments that they should have enchanted me to blank my will. The next morning, player four has been taken out. They were the cleric. The veteran player discovered the serial killer, player number 11, and used their ability to remove them from the game. Seven players are left, and of those remaining, 15 and 8 appear to be targets. The town is working through all the evidence up to this point. No one could decide, and another night falls. This could cost the town the game. Player 3 was the sheriff, and they fall the next morning. The deputy lays all the cards on the line and asks everyone to whisper them their roles. This may seal their fate as well. Player 8... 15 and 2 all respond to player 10. The former player 3 says 8 is suspect, and 1 originally confirms the enchanter, then retracts the comments saying it's not. Players 10, 15, 13, and 8 voted against player 14 in a huge turn, and they declare their innocence, but the town moves forward, and it's revealed they were the coven enchanter. Five players remain, one is the jester and one is the coven leader for sure. The next day, 15 was taken out by the coven, and they were the veteran. Four remain, and player 13, as the mayor, gets the option to cast two votes if they reveal themselves. I had to ask how it worked. I heard the mayor reveals around day four or five. There should be a button next to your banner on the top right. They were able to reveal, but unfortunately, it was too late to continue voting. The former players offer some kind of advice on how to play as we roll into the final days. The mayor is removed, and now only the coven leader, jester, and town member remain. Some final decisions were made between the remaining players. The jester decided to haunt the deputy, and the coven leader killed them, causing the town to lose and the coven to win. Even though the loss happened, some currency was earned, which can be spent on various items in the shop. It's definitely an interesting game, just probably not for everyone. If you've ever played this one, let me know what you thought as a comment down below, and I'll see you for another Jar of Plays sometime soon.